Energy could soon be in the headlines again as threats to tankers in the Black Sea and Strait of Hormuz, the coup in Niger, and discussions of military intervention there all threatened to destabilize an already dislocated energy market. As if to make the point about the degree of fragility, European natural gas prices jumped 40% on Wednesday last week in response to news of potential strike action by LNG workers in Australia. While there may have been trade-based reasons for the extent of this particular move, it highlights deeper concerns about the state of Europe's gas supply, with a backdrop of a half-drained strategic petroleum reserve in the US that the administration has so far refused to refill, a further extension of the Saudi 1 million barrel per day oil cut through September, and a US warning to avoid Iranian waters due to attempted seizures of tankers by the Iranian Navy, where approximately 20% of global oil and gas output moves via the Strait of Hormuz. Even without any of these factors, Germany will face potential gas shortages in cold winters going out to 2027, according to the country's own gas storage operators, who also warned particularly cold temperatures this winter could expend Germany's gas stores by the end of January, despite being 90% full now. And just to make things more interesting, a potential recession in the next year could equally see oil demand plummet. Oil dropped 70% in 2008. The most live threat to global energy supplies is arguably the increasing threat of military confrontation in the Black Sea between Ukraine and Russia, which sees, in addition to one-third of global wheat exports, approximately 20% of Russia's oil pass through its waters. Any significant disruption here could have dramatic consequences. So far, Ukraine hasn't targeted Russian ports or shipping, and with the Black Sea Grain Deal active, which allowed Ukraine to continue exporting food, the negatives of doing so outweighed the positives. But Russia has since abandoned the deal, targeting Ukrainian ports and more significantly, not only Ukrainian ports on the Black Sea, but on the Danube as well. During the grain deal, 40% of Ukrainian grain went through the Black Sea, but 60% went to Europe through the Danube. If Russia cuts Ukrainian exports off from the rest of the world, Ukraine begins to run out of reasons to avoid targeting Russian exports themselves. In fact, doing so may give them a useful bargaining chip. It's likely then no coincidence that after the grain deal ended and Russian strikes on Ukrainian ports began, that Ukraine sent two drones to attack Russian ships, hitting a Russian tanker that Ukraine claimed was supplying fuel for military operations, and a Russian warship in the port of Novorossiysk, an important oil hub. And the Ukrainian Defense Ministry appeared to confirm this, releasing a statement that read, there are no more safe waters or peaceful harbors for you in the Black or Azov seas. Just how far Ukraine will take things is unclear, and it's unlikely allies like the US will want to see any significant disruption to energy markets. It's also worth noting that the two drone attacks conducted by Ukraine were against what could objectively be considered military targets, so any attacks on Russian ports would be significant and worth watching out for. But the Russia-Ukraine conflict isn't the only source of potential disruption to energy markets. Iran has been making a lot of noise in the Strait of Hormuz, a thin stretch of water between Oman and Iran that allows around 20% of the global oil supply and 80% of natural gas to exit the Persian Gulf. Disruption here would have a significance that dwarfs any potential problems in the Black Sea. And Iran has been increasingly brazen in its attempts to seize oil tankers recently, leading to a US warning that vessels are being advised to transit as far away from Iranian territorial waters as possible. In the past two years, Iran has either seized or attempted to seize at least 20 oil tankers, with the last seizures happening in May when two tankers were captured by Iranian fast attack boats. But the most recent incidents occurred on the 5th of July, when Iran attempted to seize two commercial tankers, even firing on one, as seen in footage captured by US drones. Seizures were only avoided due to the presence of US Navy vessels, with pursuit broken off by Iran after the US deployed MQ-9 Reaper drones, the missile destroyer USS McFall, and other aircraft. These threats to commercial shipping are being taken seriously by the US, with officials stating that plans are being considered to deploy US soldiers or sailors to tankers traveling through the region, with additional F-35 and F-16 fighters having already been deployed. And in the last 24 hours, U.S. Central Command released images of A-10s in joint operations with the USS McFall in the Arabian Gulf, releasing a statement saying, This live-fire op shows CENTCOM's commitment to freedom of navigation, a safe and secure maritime environment in the Strait of Hormuz and the region. These threats to the global energy supply may not ultimately materialize. The U.S. naval presence may deter further Iranian aggression, and Ukraine and Russia may come to an agreement although it would be more accurate to say Russia and the EU and US may come to an agreement, as Russia is ultimately using the threat of global food shortages to have sanctions against it removed. But with these threats to shipping in the Black Sea and Middle East, tensions in the South China Sea, and a coup in Niger, which has supplied 24% of the EU's uranium for nuclear reactors, any single event could upset the finely balanced global energy network, seeing prices once again rise, and economies and communities dealing with the fallout. 
And with Europe's energy situation still unresolved and the US Strategic Petroleum Reserve half emptied in the last 18 months, there is little room for error. 